Hello everyone. Today I want to discuss a concept review of the concept system of equations. Every single SAT math section that I have ever seen, I believe, if I recall correctly, has, a, has had at least one, if not two, system of equations questions, right? So I'm talking about between section three and section four of the SAT math. You're going, to, you're going to definitely see one of these, at least one of these types of questions. So today's review is just how to recognize them and then also how to approach them, right? The methods that we use to approach these types of questions. If you like this video and the videos that I have on my, on my page, please do subscribe to the channel, share the channel with your friends. I have a audacious goal of reaching 1 million students this year. It has nothing to do with subscribers. I'd love for you guys to subscribe and I want that subscriber count to go up as high as is humanly possible, but also it's all about the views as well, right? So as many people that can watch the videos, let's tell them that they're watching and hopefully getting some benefit out of and hopefully having some impact on how they approach the SAT and then at the end of the day, how they are scoring on their actual test. That is, that is my goal. That is my vision for this whole channel. So again, like I said, today we're talking about system of equations. I have a few examples for, for you that have all been taken from the official SAT test one. If you don't have that test, please Google it and download that test. It's a great test to to use. You really want to use as many um, official practice tests as you possibly can. So that's a good one to start off with. So our first example here is, is number nine from test one, right? So here's what a system of equations question will look like. You'll typically have a, a system of equations, right? So two equations stacked on top of each other. We see that for the first equation, we have X value and then a Y term and then our regular number. That's our typical. And the second equation, things are a little mixed up. So what I'm going to do, just start off the bat, is I'm going to rewrite this and I am going to rearrange the second equation so that the X's line up and the Y's line up. Okay. Next, I'd like to discuss the methods that we use for system of equations questions. The most popular method is elimination. This is the method that I use the most for system of equations questions on the SAT. And the term elimination just means that you are going to multiply, right? So in fact, let me back up. You want to combine these two equations in a way that leads to the elimination of one variable. If you cannot, right, so like what we have, I combine these two equations together, I'm not going to eliminate the x, right, because 3x minus 2x is 2x. I'm not going to eliminate the y, because 4y plus 2y is 6y. But So if you cannot eliminate through simple um, combination or addition of the two equations together, you have the power to multiply one or both equations by whatever number you want so that you can eliminate through combination, right? So when I multiply this bottom equation by three, my top equation remains 3x plus 4y equals negative 23, but the bottom equation is now negative 3x minus 6y equals negative 57. And in doing so, when I combine these equations together now, my x's are eliminated, okay? And it should have been a plus 6y. I'm not sure why I put a minus there. Um, 4y plus 6y is 10y. And negative 23 plus negative 57 is negative 80. So my last step here is to solve for the variable that we have. So I'm dividing both sides by y. I'm sorry, by 10. And I'm left, I'm left with y equals negative 8. Which for this question happens to be enough to answer the question because there's only one answer choice that has negative 8 as the y value. Just to continue on, just to show you how you would find the x value if you really needed to, um, we take the y value that we just solved for. I like to go back up to the original question, figure out which one of these is the easiest equation to plug my number into, right, this negative 8 that I just figured out. So for us, it's going to be the second equation. And I just plug that negative 8 in. So I remove this y and I replace it with a negative 8. So 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. I still have minus x. I still have negative 19. 
and then I'm just gonna solve for X, right? So I add 16 to both sides, and just to move up here where I have more space, I'm left with negative X is equal to negative three, and then I can divide both sides by negative one, leaving me with X equals positive three. So my ordered pair solution would be three comma eight, sorry, comma negative eight, and that's why the answer is choice B. Let's look at our next example. So again, this is a much longer question and it looks a little different than the previous question. We don't have X and Y, we have B and X and C and X, but you can see that the format is still the same. We still have this uh, system of equations, right? Two equations stacked on top of each other. So let's see how we would utilize what we know about elimination um, to solve this question. So the question says in the equations above, B and C represent the the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively, X weeks after July 1st during last summer. What was the price per pound of beef, right? So what was B, basically, when it was equal to the price per pound of chicken, right? So we know that B is equal to C. So this becomes a little weird because, in essence, um, what we are saying is that B is equal to C, which means I could replace this B and say that that's the C, so C equals that as well, which means I'd have this equation, C equals 2.35 plus 0.25x, and I'd also have C equals 1.75 plus 0.40x, and here's where we use another method. This method is called, element, is called substitution. And we don't have to use substitution. We could actually use elimination here. But substitution ends up being a little bit easier for me, at least in this case. And it gives me an opportunity to show you this other method that we use when we have a system of equations. So because I know C is equal to this and C is equal to that, I can replace this C with this entire equation. So that means that what I end up with is... 2.35 plus 0.25x is equal to 1.75 plus 0.40x. Now I can simplify this by uh, subtracting 2.35 on both sides and subtracting 0.40x on both sides. The 2.35s are gone. 0.25 minus 0 0.40 is negative 0.15x. And then 1.75 minus 2.35 is negative 0.60. These are gone. And I can divide both sides by negative 0.15. And I get that x is equal to positive Four. Now, X represents weeks. Again, the question is not asking for the number of weeks. It's asking for the price per pound of beef. So I'm going to take this X equals four and go back up here to the beef equation and just say, okay, well, if B equals 2.35 plus 0.25 X, I'm going to now say, well, B must be equal to 2.35 plus 0.25 times four because I just figured out that X is four. 0.25 times four is just one. Right, so this becomes 2.35 plus 1, and therefore B is equal to $3.35, right? So 3.35, and therefore our answer here is choice D. So again, the setup of this question looks like a system of equations. We do, in fact, use substitution, which is another method for solving systems of equations. Again, we could have used elimination, in which case I would have needed to... Um, cancel out the X's there. Maybe I could have got the C value. Uh, but I like substitution here, so that's why we used it. And hopefully this reminds you in the future that not all system of equations questions look the same. Our last example is more uh, normalized. This is how a typical system of equations question looks. We have our first equation, X plus Y equals negative 9. The next equation, x plus 2y equals negative 25. And the question says, according to the system of equations above, what is the value of x? So we don't care about y, we just want to have x, which means if I decide to use the elimination method, which I will, it makes sense for me to eliminate the y value. It would not make sense for me to just subtract the bottom um, equation and eliminate x. 
right? Because I'm solving for x. So I actually want to keep x. So what I'm going to do instead is multiply the top equation by negative 2. Because in doing so, the top equation becomes negative 2x minus 2y equals positive 18. And then on the bottom, I have x plus 2y equals negative 25. And as you can see now, when I combine these, negative 2x plus x is just negative x. But my y's are gone, which is exactly what I want. And then 18 minus 25 is equal to negative 7. And I can just divide both sides by negative 1 and get positive x equals positive 7, right? So my answer here for the value of x is 7. So this is the last example for today. These are all the system of equations questions from test one. If you're looking through another test currently, please look through and find those questions. Remember, um, the methods are elimination in which you can multiply one or both equations by whatever you need to multiply by so that one of the variables eliminate. And then the other method is substitution. Substitution really is about replacing a variable with what that variable represents, right? Replacing a variable with an equation, an expression, replacing that variable with a term, right? So hopefully that makes sense as well. These questions will always show up. I don't think, again, I've ever seen an SAT test where between section three and section four, there was not at least one system of equations question. And my goal for you is that you never, ever miss these types of questions. There are more complex system of equations questions then were represented in test one here, which we will get to as I move on to the to the other tests. Um, however, you know, these questions do represent a good baseline and fundamental understanding of how we approach these questions, these con this concept system of equations. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye bye.